everyone so in this video I'm gonna solve this magnetically coupled circuit as you can see in this picture um, so in this circuit we have a mutual inductance M of 0.2 Henry we have a voltage source of 12 cosine 10 T and then we have our coil a capacitor and a resistor and what we're looking for is for I1 I2 as you can see in the figure and also the energy stored in the coupled coil at T equal to 15 milliseconds. So what we have to do in this kind of circuits is first we have to uh, kind of make the circuit simpler so we can um, apply the mesh or node analysis whichever we want on our circuit. So the first thing that we have to do here is to convert all the inductances and capacitances into an impedance. So then we can have the algebraic equations being um, applied on them. So let me first write this. So we know that for L, if we want to find the impedance for an inductor, uh, we're going to have J omega L. And for a capacitor, we're going to have 1 over J omega c so as it is clear here we need to see what is omega so if we look at our voltage source we see that the omega for this circuit is equal to 10 so our omega will be equal to 10 radians so we can find the impedances for all um, of our inductances and also the capacitor so l1 is equal to 0 0.5 um, henry So the impedance of L1 will be J multiplied by omega multiplied by the inductance, and that would be equal to 5J. And for L2, we have 1 Henry. So the impedance of L2 will be equal to J multiplied by omega multiplied by 1, and that would be 10J. And then M is also the mutual inductance, and we have it as 0 0.2 Henry. So the impedance of M will be J multiplied by 10 multiplied by 0 0.2, and that would give us 2J. So these are the impedances for the inductors. And then we have the capacitor. So our C is equal to 25 millifarads. So the impedance of C will be equal to 1 over um, 25, 10 to the negative 3 for the milli, omega, and J, and that would give us minus 4J. So now we have all the impedances, so I can rewrite the circuit, redraw the circuit using these impedances. And also, we want to get rid of the um, this mutual inductance, so we know that each of these coils, each of these inductors will have, will induce um, a voltage on the other um, side of, the, on the other coil, on the other inductor, as an effect of the current that is passing through it. So for example, we see here that we have I1, as we also had it before, as a, is a current that is passing through the 0 0.5 Henry. So this I1 that is passing through the 0 0.5 Henry will induce a voltage in the 1 Henry inductor. And also the current I2 that is passing through the 1 Henry will induce a voltage in the 0 0.5 Henry. So each of these two um, coils, they will have a dependent voltage source in series with them. Um, that are as, a, as an effect of the current passing through the other coil. So if you want to redraw the circuit, what we're going to have is, as I said, we have our L1, then we have this, uh, this dependent source, voltage source. So we have the dependent voltage source that is, um, that is here because that is induced here because of the effect of I2. And then when we have L2, we have a dependent voltage source as an effect of I1. And then we have the capacitor, the resistor, and the voltage source. Okay, so here for L1, we have 5J. So now I'm just writing their um, impedances here. 
the voltage was 12 with the angle of 0. For 25 millifarad, we have minus 4J. For 1 Henry, we have 10J. And for the um, resistor, we're going to have 5. Now, first we have to find the polarity of these dependent voltage sources. So we go up here. So for the dependent voltage source that is in series with 0 0.5 Henry, we have to look at I2. So I2 is entering the dotted terminal of the coil. So the dotted terminal at the other coil will have the positive polarity. So we have positive, negative. And then for the dependent source that is in series with the 1 Henry, we have to look at I1. And we see that I1 is also entering the dotted terminal of the um, inductor. So the dotted terminal at the other coil will be also positive. So this way, um, we can find the, the polarity of this dependent voltage sources. And then their value will be M, which is our mutual inductance, multiplied by the current that is inducing this voltage. So um, the dependent voltage source that is in series with 5J will be 2J, which is my M, multiplied by I2, which is the current that is inducing this voltage. And then for the other one will be 2J I1. And then we have I1 and I2 as we had before. So here we can go ahead and write um, two KVLs for these two loops in order to find I1 and I2, which were the first um, requirements of our problem. So let's write the KVL in mesh one, which has I1 as the current. So 12 is equal to 5J I1. So I'm going to write this I's as capital I, so the dots will not be like confusing. So we're going to have I1 and I2. So I'm just changing them because we had dots at J and I, so I don't want them to be like confusing. And I1. Okay, so we have 12 is equal to 5J I1 plus 2J I2 minus 4J I1 minus I2. Now, if I want to simplify that, I'm going to have 12 is equal to 5J minus 4J. I'm going to have J I1 and plus 6J I2. So this will be my first equation. Then I'm going to need another equation so I can have two equations and two unknowns in order to find I1 and I2. So I'm going to write the KVL in the second um, loop as well. So we're going to have 10J I2 plus 2J I1 plus 5 I2 minus 4J I2 minus I1 is equal to zero. And then again, if I simplify that, I'm going to have 10J um, minus four. So we have six J plus five multiplied by I2 and plus six J I1. That will be equal to zero. Okay. So now here I have two equations and two unknowns. So what I can do, I can just write them in the matrix format and then use MATLAB in order to solve them. So I'm gonna write it in the uh, matrix, form, matrix format and then I'm gonna write the result that I have, um, I got from MATLAB. All right, so the matrix format will look like this. So we have a matrix multiplied by I1 I2, and that would be equal to our constants. So for the first equation, I have J I1, and then I have 6 J I2, and then for the second equation, I have 6 J I1, and then 5 plus 6 J I2. Then the constant in the first equation is 12, and the second equation is 0. So using MATLAB, I found I1 and I2, so I1 is equal to 3.081 with the angle of um, sorry, 
with the angle of 40.74 degrees and then I2 is equal to 2.367 with the angle of minus 99.46 degrees. So it is no worth mentioning here that if you enter this matrix as it is in the MATLAB, it will give you the results in the rectangular format and then you can um, convert them to the polar format that I did over here. So this is I1 and I2 that I was looking for. Now the second part of the question, it is asking us to find, to calculate the energy stored in the coupled coils at T equal to 15 milliseconds. So what I have to do here is first I have to find I1 and I2 at that moment, at T equal to 15 milliseconds, okay? So first let me write at T equal to 15 milliseconds. So if I look at my I1 and I2 that I have over here, we do not have any T here, right? But we know that our voltage that we have in the circuit was a cosine function, right? So then we're going to have the cosine function for the current, and then we have the phase shifts found over here. So we will have the same omega for the current as well. So we can say that I1 of T will be equal to the amplitude, 3.081 cosine of 10t omega t plus the phase shift, 40.74 degrees. And then I2 of t will be equal to the amplitude, 2.367 cosine of 10t uh, minus 99.46 degrees. Okay, so now I have I1 of T and I2 of T, and I want to know what is the current I1 and I2 at the exact moment of T equal to 15 milliseconds. So T equal to 15 milliseconds, it means that if I want to enter it over here, so what would I have? I would have a radian, right, which is my omega. And then I'm going to have my T in seconds, right? So now what I have to do is that I have to convert this to um, degrees, right? So I can add another um, degree to it, all right? So let's do that together. So over here, we can say that for 10T, let me, because for both of them we have 10t, we can do it once. So we have 10t. That would be equal to 10 multiplied by 15 multiplied by 10 to the negative 3, okay? And that would give me 0 0.15 radians, and that will be equal to 8.59 degrees, okay? So I can use this in both I1 and I2. So I can say that I1 is equal to 3.081 cosine of 49.33 degrees and that would be equal to 2.0789 amps and I2 is equal to 2.367 cosine of minus 90.87 degrees and that is equal to minus 0 0.03594 amps okay so now I have I1 and I2 at the moment that I was looking for looking at and then I can find um, now the energy stored in the coil in the coupled coils so we know that the energy stored in the coupled coils is equal to half L1 I1 squared plus half L2 I2 squared plus minus M I1 and I2. So if we have both currents entering or leaving the dotted terminal, then we're going to use the positive sign, which is the case in this question. So both currents, if you remember um, up here, both currents are entering the dotted terminal of the coils, right? So we're going to use the positive sign over here. So what I have to do 
right now is only I have to plug in the numbers that I have and in order to find um, my energy stored in the coupled coils. So W will be equal to 0 0.5 multiplied by L1, which is 0 0.5 multiplied by I1 squared. So this I1 will be the I1 that I have at the time t equal to 15 millisecond, which is up there, plus 0 0.5 multiplied by L2 multiplied by I2 that I found, which is 0 0.03594 amps squared, and then plus M, which is 0 0.2 multiplied by I1 multiplied by I2. And the result will be 10.0652 joules. All right. So I hope you understood this problem and it was useful for you. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.